Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to do the vertical analysis using Excel. So it's going to be a quick lesson here. We have the income statement or the statement of comprehensive income for Mesmat Group, which is a company that is listed on the stock exchange. And we are going to do the vertical analysis. Now we have two years here. We have 2019 and 2018. As you'll always have at least two years and you may be required maybe in your question to do the vertical analysis. So here's how you go about doing that. So the first thing that I like doing is to insert another column, okay, between the two years. So I'm going to click on column D. That's where 2018 is. And I'm going to right click and press insert and then you have another column okay so this column is blank now what i'm going to call it here is vertical analysis so i'm just going to write here vertical analysis right and then i'm going to do the vertical analysis for 2019 here but we're just going to copy what we've done in 2019 and we do the same in 2018 and it's quite easy so here's what you do now if you know what vertical analysis is every item in our income statement or the statement of comprehensive income what percentage is it of our sales okay what percentage is every item on our income statement of our sales so we know that the sales or revenue, you might have yours as revenue, is the very first line item in our income statement. As you can see here, we have the sales. So let me just color that so that you can see. There we go. That's our sales. And we want to see every other item. What percentage is it of this sales? So here's what you do. We can see here that sales is in column C and row 6, right? So what we're going to do here is where I've written vertical analysis under sales, I'm going to press equals and then I choose the cell where the sales is or where the revenue is, okay, which is cell C6, okay? And then I divide that by the exact same cell, okay? Cell C6. That is what I do. But what I also do is to make sure that I lock the row. Okay, others like to lock both the column and the row, but I prefer to lock just the row and you'll see why just now. And how do we go about doing that? So what I've done is that I've taken cell C6 where our sales is for 2019 and I've divided that by cell C6. So the numerator and the denominator is exactly the same. And before I press enter, I need to lock the row for my denominator. Okay, how do I do that? Well, I just press F4. And if I press F4, you can see here it comes with a dollar sign. But you'll see it comes with two dollar signs. What does that mean? It means that the column and the row is locked. If I'm to copy the same cell to another cell, you'll see that the column and the row is locked. But that's not what I want. I want to lock only the row. So I press F4 again. Okay, so here's what you do. You press F4 twice, okay, on your denominator. And then you press enter. And there you'll see it will give you a number and it's giving us here one, okay? Now that we have that number, we just need to drag it down all the way to our profit or loss for the year. You can see here the last line item is our profit or loss for the year. So let me quickly remind you how we do that. You press equals and then you press the cell where the sales or the revenue is. And then you divide that by the exact same cell where the sales or the revenue is and you lock the row by pressing F4 twice and then you press enter. Once you've done that, all we need to do is just to drag this cell all the way down to where our profit or loss is. And how do you do that? You go here to, our, to, your, to the bottom right of the cell and you can see it appears as a plus and then you drag it all the way down. And once you do that, you will see the, that it will apply to every cell. So what is it just done? It has taken every line item and it has divided it by the sales. And how did it do that? It's because we locked the row. We wanted the row to stay constant, okay? And then what I like doing here is you can see something appears here at the bottom. I'm going to click on fill without formatting, okay? And you can see what it has done there. It's just taken 
our formulas and applied them to every cell that we needed it to apply okay and then once i've done that all i need to do is to press the percentage sign so obviously the structure of your excel might look a bit different from mine but it's very similar so i press the percentage sign once i've done that it has removed the decimal so i have to increase the decimals again you press this sign here facing the left and i press it twice and you can see it's to two decimal places and you can see your sales has to always be hundred percent and everything else is a percentage of your sales okay so i've written their vertical analysis and i'm gonna write there 2019 so that i'm not confused or no one is confused as to which one it applies to now once i've done for 2019 it's so easy to do for 2018 i just have to copy everything under the vertical analysis and then i just paste it here where we are at 2018 and it will begin at sales so if i paste it you can see it has applied the exact same thing we did for 2019 to 2018 now if i had locked my column and my row it would not be possible for me to do that but the fact that i only locked my row it's allowing me to do that so you can try another method you will arrive at the exact same answer as mine if you do it correctly remember your sales has to be 100 percent now that we have just completed our vertical analysis so i'm just gonna copy this and paste it here and then right here 2018 now that we are done with our vertical analysis what does it mean or what is the significance of doing the vertical analysis so let me just color the vertical analysis here so that you can see it clearly so i'm gonna put that color and do the same here so what does it mean once you've done the vertical analysis what's the importance of doing the vertical analysis or you may be asked to comment on the vertical analysis of an income statement well it's not that difficult to do for one if you know your financial ratios what you'll notice here if you go to gross profit you can see under 2019 it's 18.91% and under 2018 it's 19.01%. What is that? That is your gross profit margin. And that is what your vertical analysis does. It already gives you your gross profit margin. So my gross profit margin for 2019 is 18.91% and for 2018 it was 19.01%. We have also our trading profit margin. We can see here it's 1.19 in 2019 and 2.27 in 2018. We have our operating profit margin 0.76% in 2019 and 2.08% 2 in 2018. And you can see all the way we have here at the end our net profit margin, which is negative in 2019 because we had a loss for the year and it was a positive 0.96% in 2018. So your comments can center around those where you're saying these are the ratios based on our vertical analysis. But what does that mean? Well, let's quickly look at our gross profit margin, which is 18.91% in 2019. What does that mean? It means that from our sales, we're able to get a gross profit margin of 18.91%, meaning we made a gross profit of 18.91 percent that means that our cost of sales took the rest 80.98 percent as you can see over here but when you compare that to 2018 what else do you notice you notice that it was slightly higher in 2018 it was 19.01 percent what does that mean well that means that possibly we reduced our selling price per unit Okay, if we are selling products or if you're providing a service, you reduced your rates or your cost of sales increased in the current year compared to the previous year or a combination of both. Okay, and that is how you go about an uh, analyzing this one here. You will say that 2018, our gross profit margin was slightly higher than 2019 and these are the possible reasons why and I've just mentioned them. Another way you could do that is by looking at your percentages and seeing which expense has the highest percentage of all the other expenses, with the exception of cost of sales, of course, because we know usually our cost of sales would take the highest percentage. But if you look down here, which is your highest percentage? Well, you can see we have employment cost of 8.74% in 2019 and 8.34% in 2018. And do we see anything higher than that? No, we don't. So you can say the highest operating cost for the company is employment costs, which is taking the most from the revenue the company has made 
other than what cost of sales has taken. So here you're looking at the expenses which are incurred as a result of the sales that you have made or the expenses that you are incurring as part of your operations in relation to your sales or your revenue. So remember, our revenue or the revenue that we make, we are going to disperse that to the expenses that we are incurring as a business. So you want to see how many percent is each of my expenses incurring. And that will also help a company be able to know how to efficiently manage its costs because now that we know our employment cost is the highest one of all other costs apart from the cost of sales, then we want to know how can we efficiently use our workforce to be able to get optimal results or is this expense justifiable that it's taking one of the biggest percentages of the expenses that we have as a company. So I hope it has made sense. I hope you now know how to do the vertical analysis using Excel, but also that you are able to analyze the vertical analysis. And in the link in the description below, you'll also find a lesson where we show you how to do horizontal analysis and also how to make comments on your horizontal analysis. I hope you've gained value from this one. And if you have, please subscribe to our channel, like this video and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time. Cheers.